Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Diva. This is video 12, and today we're talking about LFOs. So let's go to the presets over here and load up init MS Rev 1, and then back to our main tab. Let's bring our sustain up all the way in our envelope and then drag the cutoff down a little bit so we have something like this. So we have two LFOs, we have LFO1 vibrato and LFO2 mod. Now both of these can modulate a lot of stuff. These parentheses are kind of set up in a certain way to use vibrato and then more so for modulation. So a quick demonstration for this vibrato here. If we look over in this tuning panel, which we're gonna to get to in a later video, but if we turn up this vibrato slider over here and then also decrease this depth mod, we have a slow vibrato, right? So we can increase this right here. So we have a pretty easy vibrato right there. So with that being said, let's turn back down our vibrato. Let's actually just go and reset to this preset here, bring the sustain back up and drop off the cutoff. So the easiest way to demonstrate these LFOs is gonna be through pitch over here. So where this says envelope two, let's click this here and let's select LFO one. So we know that we're gonna be targeting the pitch with LFO one. Now, if we play something, we're not gonna really hear any effects. We have to turn this knob here, right? but we still don't hear anything. And we're like, why is this not happening? Always remember that this first one here, if this is by default, this depth mod is gonna be all the way to the right on mod wheel. So let's turn this to the left. So now we have our LFO working on our pitch here. Pretty self-explanatory. So first let's go over these shapes here. So let's start off with sign. So if we hit a note here, we can see that this pitch is getting modulated by this sine wave, and we can see the shape over down here, which is gonna be a little bit more important to look at here as opposed to the oscilloscope. Then we have our triangle. Then we have our saw up. Then our saw down. Then we have our square high-low. and then square low high. And then we have random hold. Which is just giving us different values every so often. And then we have random glide, which is very similar to random hold, except they just glide in between the notes. So next up we have the restart over here. So for this, let's go to a triangle. So this is basically telling us how do we want our LFO to restart. So by default, it's gonna be on gate. So let's go over to sync here and let's take a look at this one. So as we hit notes, it doesn't really matter what notes we're hitting or what we're doing. This LFO is just gonna keep on going and it's gonna keep drawing this triangle shape forever and ever and ever. So it's always, always going. Next up, we're gonna have gate. And as you can see, it gets restarted every single time we hit a note. Now the interesting with this as well is if we hit a note and then we hit another note somewhere in the cycle, it's gonna start drawing its own shape. So take a look at this. So each note is basically getting that motion, its own triangle wave. comes up with some really cool patterns over here. Next up, we have this single. And we might think this is kind of similar to the, uh, the this one gate that we had over here, because we're hitting the notes and it keeps restarting and restarting. But the cool part, so once we hit a note here and we add another one in it, it's just gonna basically hop on the bus and keep riding that, uh, that waveform. So every time I hit a note, it's gonna restart, and if I add some more notes, it's gonna keep going on to that shape. As opposed to the gate, which doesn't do that. So that's an interesting little difference there. And then we have random over here, which basically it's starting the LFO in a random spot every single time. 
but once we hold it, it's going to still draw that shape. Just every time we hit one of those notes, it's going to pick a different value or random value within that LFO cycle. All right, pretty self-explanatory there. So let's go over to gate. So we have something kind of like this. Now we have our sync here. So we have a lot of things to sync to. So we have a couple times. We have 0.1 second. We have one second and then 10 seconds. The rest of the stuff here is going to be synced to your host BPM. So one over eight, one over four, so on and so forth. You got some dotted, some triplets, and so on and so forth. Kind of a lot of stuff to choose from. I don't really think you're going to run out of stuff to choose from. So that's pretty self-explanatory. We can always sync this with a tempo. So this is going to be one bar, basically. So the LFO will restart after every single bar. And then we can go here to half a bar. Quarter. And eighth. So pretty much makes sense. So if we had like a click track on, for example, let's turn this down just in case it's not so loud. So it's basically going to be in time with that click right over there. All right, so moving on from there, let's put this back to, let's say one second over here. Okay, so now we have our phase knob over here. So basically this is determining where in the phase for LFO is this going to start. So at the very left here, it's gonna start like this. We see our triangle start from the bottom and it goes up and then it comes back down. However, if we wanted to maybe invert that, we can always move this up to about 50 or exactly 50 right over here. Now we start, we're starting off with an inverted triangle. And then we can go anywhere in between. So if we want a little bit of an uprise before the triangle descends, we can do that like this. So it's really just picking the spot in the waveform to start from. Let's put this back down here to the left, and then we have delay, which basically delays the, uh, the LFO. So let's give it a healthy amount here. And about by there, we're kind of already kicked into full value. And this can go quite a long way. So if we have a way over here, it's going to think it's like 20 seconds or something like that. Which I'm not going to make you wait that long. You can do that on your own time. Okay, next up we have rate. So basically this is an offset for the speed that we already have chosen. So if it's straight up in the middle, it's basically going to be following whatever we have synced here. However, if we deviate from that, going to the left is going to substantially slow this down. Or speed it up on the other side. Almost sounds like those sirens, right? So yeah, pretty cool there. Double click that to go back to default. Now these two knobs over here, rate and depth mod. So basically these are going to be modulation sources. So the easiest way I can kind of show you this is since we're just talking about this rate here, right? So how fast this is going. So we have this rate modulation. Now let's say we click this none here and we have a lot of stuff to choose from and we will go over some of these in a later video. But for this situation, let's go to key follow. So basically different keys on your keyboard, your mini keyboard will have different values. So lower notes are going to be a slower rate and then higher notes are going to be a faster rate. So take it to listen to this when it's in the middle. There's not really much of a change. However, if we play, if we turn this to the left here, and then let's hit a note like a low note, and then a high note. And depending on where this knob is, it's where you're gonna have different influences. If you turn this to the right, the lower notes are gonna be much slower, and the higher notes are gonna be much faster. So if we did something really drastic and crank this all the way to the right. Remember the speed here, and now take a listen to the high notes. So basically, whatever we select here is going to influence this rate modulation. And the same is also true for this depth mod right over here. So let's put this back to normal, let's select none. So now we have this depth mod, so how much of this depth are we going to have? So take a listen to this, this is kind of just showing what depth is already kind of doing, right? 
Remember when I said before, if it's all the way to the right, there's no depth, which means there's no LFO. And as we turn this to the left, we're getting a stronger and more of a in-depth LFO, you could say. So if you have a cool LFO setup, but it's, it's a little bit too powerful, you can always reach for this knob here and kind of fine tune that a little bit. If we're doing something kind of like this, and that's too much pitch modulation, and I don't want to mess with the settings up here, that's why I can go down here and kind of just back off a little bit. Maybe that's enough pitch modulation I would like. So with that being said, let's do the same thing that we did, and let's select key follow, and take a listen to what that sounds like. So these lower notes is, is, is almost as if I had this knob a little bit more to the right here, where it's not so intense, it's not so in-depth. And then if I do higher notes, it's almost like it turns a, a little bit to the left, and there's much more depth in there. Because we're, we're, tra we're traveling a lot more on that pitch modulation than we would on our lower end. Hopefully this all makes sense. But yeah, so that's just kind of modulation you can do, and that's just using the key follow. You can do a lot of different stuff here, like you can use that same concept with your mod wheel. So the more you increase your mod wheel, the more depth you're going to get or something like that. So it's really up to you how you use these, uh, these knobs and these different parameters here. So let's put this back to none. And the last thing that we do need to talk about is going to be this polarity switch over here. So by default, these LFOs are going to be bipolar, meaning that they go positive, they go down to zero, and then they go into the negative category and then repeat and so on and so forth. Kind of like how envelopes are always positive and never go into negative territory, LFOs can go bipolar. So up and plus one and then to minus one, so on and so forth. If we click this polarity, that's going to change it to unipolar. So the easiest way we can demonstrate this is play note here. So this is going to be our bass pitch, right? Now take a listen to this polarity switch as I change this. And we can even see that once the unipolar is selected, so once this polarity is activated, it goes to unipolar, and you can see how much less value that we get. Because if you almost draw a line right through here, you're kind of kind of cutting the waveform in half and bringing all the po or the negative stuff positive. So it can only oscillate in positive territory. So that's basically the LFOs in a nutshell. The second one is basically the same thing. You have all the same controls and parameters. You have two of these in Diva, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much how they work. Hopefully, you learned something. And thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.